Hello and welcome to another video of breaking down touch footy related stuff. <laughs> and today we're going to look at a, a way that you can improve your strike dump or your attacking play. Um, very subtle, but as you can see, most of you are aware that that is a short side quickie. quickie. Uh, but let's have a look at what this player did to make it more effective. Now, the common... Um, the common rule in touch football when attacking is you want to be attacking offside players. Okay, so if this player is offside, he is the far side from the camera's middle, then the player who wants the ball will step this way to receive the ball so he can attack the onside player. If he steps the other way, he will be attacking a player who's onside and be able to move forward back at him. So they're kind of meeting... Um, meeting together off off the try line, which is not what you want. You want to be attacking an offside player, so essentially you might even be able to beat him to the try line or beat him on the way to the try line. But what happens here is this player wants to get both middles up. Okay. Now, the rule in defense is you never want to do that because if you have both middles up here in the touch, then there's all this unoccupied space okay, around you that people can attack. So you always want to have one middle back on the line, which basically, now there's only this space that you can attack. So that's that's essentially, um, with a lot of yellow lines, how, how I can explain that on the go. Okay, so one middle here is waiting to commit to the touch, and as soon as he does that, this middle will drop back. But what the number six is doing, okay, he sees this middle committing I'm gonna to move to the other side, okay? Because if now, if you wanna overcommit, okay, so sorry, this the other middle's committed, so he's moving to this side, okay? Now the rule states that you must be moving at a, at a reasonable pace, everyone must be moving at a reasonable pace forward until the touch is imminent. Now, if the touch isn't made, it's not imminent. So these guys all need to be moving forward now, which means it's very hard for them to get a good pre-touch and get back on side. Now, if this player here overcommits and goes and makes it regardless of how far he has to chase, when the number six dumps the ball, let's say he dumps the ball, he'll step forward and get in behind. I know the arrow is still in front, but he'll get in behind the player, put him offside, and then just gun it to where he should have been. So that's why we don't overcommit ourselves as defenders in the middle because we're vulnerable to actually getting behind or the ball getting in front of us because of how lateral we end up moving. All it takes is a couple of steps for them to move forward and we're, we're completely bent out of position and there's very, very little chance of recovery. So then the other option is we send the other middle up. Okay, but once we send the other middle up, he comes back to the other side or he goes and gets the link. The link comes up, no, I'm moving away. And now look, they've dropped. So the referee has an option here. He can blow a penalty uh, to the Mets who have got the ball or we see what happens next and they get him back up again. But this link, according to the rules, he has to stay up. And according to the rules, those guys had to stay up as well. So he keeps moving with the ball. And I'm going to go into a reason why you move yourself with the ball rather than throwing the ball around between two players. So now we've got this link up. He's coming in because he wants to help his middles out. Um, and it just means that he can't move, sorry, he can't move too far this way without running into that link. Okay, so he's cutting the field, which is a good which is a good um, chess move, I guess you can call it, <laughs> by the Scorps. But as you can see, the guy with the ball, he's still, no, he's not letting himself be touched there. And he's finally made the touch here. So he's got a middle up and he's got a link all the way up. And he's got a, uh, the other middle is still four meters off the line. Okay, so it's a pretty good outcome. And what this means here is you watch the length who was all the way up. Now, he knows that his link's out here. And it's at risk of a bullet pass this way. All right, because if they bullet pass straight to the link, it's basically he's just got to chase and basically outrun him to the line. So he's got to hightail it out of there and, and get back to the line in front of his own player. But they attack this way. And because the link was so far up and in, he had to get out of there. 
it just opens this gap up here for a short ball. Okay, there it is there. If he was onside at the dump, he probably starts here or maybe even closer and he can just come up and in like that. He'd be moving forward. Okay, but because he was moving around with the ball, managed to get more than one player up and less people can then um, progress off the line and come forward at the, at the attacker. So it's just very good there. Let's have a look at another clip. Okay, so we've got it again. Ball carrier is here. And he wants both middles up. Now, they, they yes, they are up, um, but he probably wants uh, to roll in it a bit better or he wants to be on the other side. So let's see what he does. We'll play the video in full first. Just moving around, trying to get him up, trying to get him up. And we get through. Try. All right. Okay, so you can see now this player here, it looks like he's committed, so he's angled his body to drop back to the line. All right, so when they make the dump, he'd be moving back to the line, gets there a lot earlier than the ball carrier here, which is the dummy half, so he can start moving forward and closing any gap that's between the two middles. Okay, because he's getting a good pre-touch. However, the 44, doesn't allow the touch to happen and moves this side, which means if you aren't blowing a penalty referee, this guy now has to move forward. Because remember, we don't want to swap the middles over. It'll bend us too far out of shape. So now he can't drop back. He has to get up. This guy has to stay up because he has to move forward. And also, well, technically, yeah, the link and the, the winger will be spoken to by the sideline referee about doing the same thing. So now both middles have got to come up. One can't drop and the other one's got to advance to the seven. He knows he wants this one, but he also now has this one progressed past the seven, which means when the dummy half picks up now, no one is moving forward to close this gap between the two middles. Because they're still worried about getting themselves on side, he can just run through the middle of them like he does. Picks up, they're both offside, and he gets through. All right, if one had have been onside then, when he starts running, he would have had to make the choice to throw a pass. Because as he got to here, a middle would have been standing off the line, ready to shut this play down. Okay, because he would have been onside. But because it was a really good dump, we managed to get through and get a try. We've got one more example, which is a junior game of something very similar happening. So let's have a look at the ball carrier here. He's wanting to get them both up. Not allowing to be touched here. Now he's got three at the touch. No one moving forward at him and he can throw the pass. All right. So it can be done in juniors as well. You stand on one side. If that middle comes up, all right, I want the other middle up. I'm going to move to the other side. And in the first video, I explained why they don't overcommit. But that, let's have a, um, a look here why you don't just pass the ball. Now, I've been in a couple of teams where the coach has said, uh, no, you don't have to move around like that. You can just pass the ball. And I say, okay, well, we can't stand this close to each other because if one person comes up and stands between us, they can stick their arms out and touch us both. So there's no point being able to do that. We won't get momentum, which means now we have to stand a lot further away. Okay, because that way we have to be further enough apart for one person can't touch two people. Uh, that happens a lot in touch foot. You have to always remember that. Don't stand if you're a support runner or checking the ball between two people. Never stand close enough for someone to be able to touch both of you. But now we're, now we're further away. So we're imagining that we're a lot further away. Okay, there's my support here. I've got this middle up. I throw the ball, but this middle gets a nice read on it and sprints right there. Okay, now he's read it. By the time I've seen him start sprinting, for me to get to dummy half, 
It's a hospital ball. Okay, so I, they've got no momentum now. I've thrown the ball. The defense has read it. Just as my teammate is catching the ball, they're getting smashed with a touch. I'm not there quick enough to be dummy half. Okay, so there's too much downtime. They get back on side. If they try and throw the ball back to me, my defender's already here in front of me. So it's a hospital ball either way. So that's why I always say, if you're already at the line, which means it's a static play. So we've already got the line. So we get a repeat set or a penalty or something like that. Just move with yourself. So this guy can always stay around dummy half. And all his job is if he wants to pass you the ball, he just passes you with, passes it whichever way you split. Or if he wants to run, he just runs at whoever you make the dump on. All right, but that's why we always move to the side. So yes, I've seen this guy. He's coming up to me. I'm going to move over here to get this guy interested. All right, so I hope that makes sense. It, it's very hard to sort of explain over a, a digital screen about this sort of stuff. But um, if you've got any questions, just hit hit me up in the comment section. I do my best to answer everyone's questions, uh, even if you just want to have a have a chat. Some people um, said congratulations to me last week, which I really appreciate. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time.